Living on a boat means our lives are ruled by weather, and we need to carefully weigh where we spend hurricane or cyclone season. Hurricane season can look like this, or it can look like this, depending on where you decide to hunker down. We chose to sail to the Caribbean Sea's ultimate hurricane hole to explore pristine islands, crystal clear water, colorful reefs, lush jungle filled with wild animals, otherworldly landscapes, and experience a different culture. This is what we learned. Sunrise at Anchor is a spectacular way to start the day. And here we appreciate it even more because many times it turns to rain. It's the perfect time to share something that we've been reflecting on. At the end of May, we made kind of an in the moment decision to spend hurricane season in Panama. And now that the season is over, we wanted to share our impression with you. First things first, Panama is very safe for hurricane season in regards to storms. Hurricanes just don't come here. In fact, this year, there were a few, a couple of storms that even went by the ABCs and we were just completely protected here in Panama. So it's great for it's that. It's a great place for that. Yeah. No storm activity, <laughs> at least no hurricane. <laughs> Right. There is some rain, of course, but this year, actually, people said that there wasn't nearly as much rain as there have been has been in previous years. So overall, the weather has been pretty good. I mean, since we, we've been in Bocos del Toro for the past couple of weeks, and it's been kind of cloudy, cloudy dreary, drizzly, but overall, not bad. No, and in the sunblast, we didn't really see a Cuyo de Polo. No. We didn't. <laughs> One of those. <laughs> and what is a, a culo de pollo? Culo de pollo is a storm that forms uh, off the uh, cliffs mm -hmm. of the jungle real fast and it comes down and it's unexpected with winds up to 40, 40 50, uh, 50, yeah, yeah, 50 knots or so, but we didn't get any of those. The weather while we were in San Blas was actually great. Yeah, better than here. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uh, it's relatively inexpensive and I mean if you are at anchor you can re live really inexpensively if you choose to stay in marinas it's about 50 to 60 cents a foot yeah it's decent price compared to Florida obviously right exactly yeah. and in Linton Bay that included uh, water and electricity was only a dollar a day so I don't want to say free but virtually yep there are a few haul out options depending where you are and of course the beam of your boat for us we were limited to linton bay which i think is the biggest it, lift i think it's the biggest lift on this side of the uh, of panama right on the atlantic side of panama so that's where we got hauled out but if you have a mono haul there you can got hauled out at Panamarina near Linton Bay or Shelter Bay. I think maybe they even have a lift somewhere here. Yeah, I think they have a lift in, in Boca. Boca. Yeah. yeah, so there are options to get hauled out and have work done, but that brings us to receiving parts and shipments. <laughs> We've said yeah. this before, there's no mail system really, like traditional mail system as we're used to in the States, so you have to sign up for a mail service, and then you can get deliveries in Cologne, which is pretty inconvenient if you're in Linton Bay, but here in Bocas del Toro, there's a service called Red and Blue that you can pick up directly in Bocas Town, and I think they, they charge by weight, something like that. Yeah, but three to five dollars a pound something like that the yep. ballpark so so you definitely can, affordable yeah you can ship your amazon stuff to an address in florida and they will forward it over to bocas and you pick it up yep week later yeah yeah exactly Not so bad. pretty convenient overall we were able to get insurance for panama so that's definitely a positive we couldn't get insurance for colombia places like colombia cuba venezuela Obviously, Venezuela. Right, of course. So, <laughs> still gonna add that to the list of yeah. pros. And Panama City has flights to many places in the world and convenient flights to Florida for us, which is great. Yeah, and Ecuador. Florida, yeah, Galapagos. Ex exactly. <laughs> and Ecuador because we wanted to go to the Galapagos. So, that yeah. was super convenient. Yeah. 
There are many places to explore in Panama, from San Blas Islands to the Bocas del Toro archipelago. I always say that word wrong. And then there are inland options like in the Cherokee region. Panama City itself is beautiful. We're close to Colombia, close to Costa Rica. So tons of places to yeah. explore just on the Caribbean side. And then once you go through the canal to um, the Pacific, Pacific side, there's Las Perlas Islands. There's um, Isla yeah. Cuiba. Yeah. It's La Cuiba and the Hannibal Bank is supposed to be amazing fishing. So tons of places to explore. What was your favorite so far? Out of the places we've explored so far, my favorite was the San Blas Islands. Yeah. The it's Central the Holland Days. Central Holland Days. And if you're particularly courageous, you can go into the Darien Forest. Yes. <laughs> that is really... <laughs> not for the faint of heart, but it will be an interesting exploration. Can be done with a guide yeah. and appropriate equipment. <laughs> yes. On the other side of the coin, we haven't had great sailing conditions since we've been here. There has either been, I mean, most of the time there's been no wind, yeah. really. Uh, it's very fickle. It, you know, if there is wind, it comes down off of the mountains. So it's really erratic, kind of hard to predict. On our way here to Bocas del Toro, we did get a squall of 40 knots. So, I mean, that's standard sailing, I think. <laughs> <laughs> I guess. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know, but uh, predict wind doesn't really work on this coast. No, it doesn't. Mm -hmm. No. So you kind of get an idea and you look around and look at the squalls and you get ready to really douse your sails pretty quick. Yeah. So you get the condition can change really fast and it's all and there's a lot of current right yeah in this area uh bocas there's like a two knot current two to three knot current flowing east, east. right so, so when the wind goes against the current the waves get pretty choppy what is it mid-december almost actually almost this, christmas so, so I we, think get it's, we got yeah. the christmas wind in linton bay we did yes so we started in linton bay as soon as kind of like the first week of december came around we the winds had picked up and it was pretty uncomfortable at the marina yeah we were at the at the dock at the time and was being like tied to a bucking bronco i know it was yeah. <laughs> So we got out of there and came over to Bocas. There really hasn't been much wind here at no. all. So, yeah, sailing is not great. No, sailing, I don't think, is the particularly most interesting feature of being in Panama. It's, it's okay in some blasts in, uh, in winter time, we understand. Yeah, we've heard that it's pretty good because you get the trade winds in the sand blasts during, you know, starting in December. And it's flat water because of the... Uh, reef all around so supposedly fun sailing yeah we haven't tried that no from time to time there can be minor political unrest though for the most part it's really peaceful it's mainly people protesting for higher salaries and lower prices of commodities because the currency is the u.s dollar We've found that prices of food and gasoline is just like in the U.S., but from what we've heard from speaking to the people here, the salaries are pretty low. Yeah. So life is can be quite expensive. Yeah, it's pretty tight for these people, but they're very nice to tourists. They're very nice to us. When yeah, we walk around yeah. during the strike, it was like... People were super friendly. I super mean, they friendly, very nice. let, you know, they showed us where to go to pass with our suitcases and people were just sitting around chit chatting, listening to music, looking at their phones. So yeah, there was no violence. No, we didn't experience any violence. That brings us to security. We've heard from people around that there's some theft of dinghies, some theft of engines when people are out at anchor. But I think this is pretty commonplace everywhere. You've just got to really be careful. Yeah. Right? If you look at the noon site, there are reports of theft, minor uh, violence here and there, uh, remote remote reports of, well, I think, a homicide here in, uh, yeah. in Bocas. And a um, in Linton Bay, there was, uh, <laughs> we know for a fact, <laughs> there was <laughs> a... Uh, 
mistaken identity and the wrong guy was beaten up by uh, <laughs> some fellows. But that was related to drug activity. Yeah, so. so just don't get involved. Easy in to stay out of trouble. <laughs> but the sun has come out, which has been a rare occurrence. So we are going to go snorkeling. Yes, we can't wait. Let us know if you guys have any other questions down in the comments. We haven't used the dinghy in a while, so it's time to blow it up. It's super stiff. <laughs> That's what she said. Yeah? That's what she said. That's what the wind can say. Yep. Anchor. Masks. One set of fans. Two sets of fins, booties, weight belts. Okay, got it. Are you ready? Do you want to go, Yoda? Do you want to go? If you're enjoying this video, give it a thumbs up, leave us a comment down below, and be sure to subscribe to the All channel. All right, ready to go. Ready to go. Finally. <laughs> All right, so that away. <laughs> Where? Yeah, exactly. There's a little patch here. But then the big patch, which I think is better, is straight and then to the right of it. So I think it's like up there. Okay. I think it's in here somewhere. If you can't tell, we don't really yeah. know where we're going. Yeah, Some folks told us here. about this spot and said there was nice snorkeling. The Navionics charts show where coral is, so we're heading to those areas to see what we can find. Part of what we enjoy about this lifestyle is the search and discovery. It's more of a challenge to figure out where to go on your own, and when you find what you're looking for, it's that much better. It turned out to be a pretty small patch of coral with not too many fish, so I hopped back in the dinghy so we could continue our search. Maybe over there? Maybe that shadow is it. The visibility. Okay, yeah, let's go there. I guess. Okay. Unfortunately, this spot turned out to be even worse with one lonely, emaciated coral head. So back in the dinghy I went. I don't think there is a graceful way to get back in the tender, so Fabio had a good laugh filming me as I flopped back in. Third time was definitely a charm, and I swam down to get a closer look at some of the creatures nestled in the coral. A huge thank you to our patrons. We are so grateful for your support. If you'd like real-time updates and additional content, consider joining the Harbors Unknown community on Patreon.
truck would uh, get back when the loading needed. <laughs> a crocodile oh my god I'll probably run across the water <laughs> I am a little nervous about swimming around the mangroves the final thing we wanted to do was explore the waters by the mangroves to see what was lurking beneath the surface I've read that mangroves are nurseries for many creatures, but this was my first time snorkeling so close to their roots, and there were thousands of tiny iridescent fish swimming about. We're back on the boat. The GoPro battery died near the end of our little adventure, but it was super cool snorkeling in the mangroves. I didn't expect that. I thought it was just gonna be creepy, but I saw these little green fish, hundreds of them, and they just kind of kept drawing me closer to the mangroves. And that when I got close, it was really neat, just kind of ethereal to see the roots coming down into the water and all of, there was a lot of coral in that area too which was surprising so that is definitely a fun surprise overall a good adventure this afternoon and pretty soon we're gonna have our dinner thanks so much for watching